my deliverer from angry nations. You set me above my assailants. You save me from the violent man, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God, of enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God? or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar explained, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of our holy, your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise. 
days forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me, because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in my Father's presence, then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace, and from your hands, O King, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O King, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. The three servants of the Lord, Shadrach, Meshach, and this last name is real pain to pronounce, Abednego, Abednego, people pronounce it different ways. I don't know which one's correct. Regardless, they have the right disposition of how we are called to live our lives. They're not telling king, the King Nebuchadnezzar that, you know, if God can save us from your furnace, we don't know if he can, but if he can, what they're saying is, is that whether it's God's will from us to be saved for the furnace or not, regardless of the situation, we won't worship your idol. We will remain faithful to the Lord our God. And there's a great beauty to this because it means that they realize that their lives belong to God and that should God call them to give witness to him by laying down their lives for, uh, for the instruction he provided to them through Moses and the prophets, they would gladly do so. They would risk everything. 
This is something that you and I are called to do. This is really the spirit of the martyrs, that we who know the Father through the Son, we who have heard the will of the Father through the Son, should strive to do his will in all things. And this is really fitting for the times in which we live in, because for those of you who heard my homily this past weekend, I was really calling everyone back to Mass to stop sheltering at home, to stop being afraid. If God chooses to, he could deliver all of us from any and every illness. The sheer fact that, you know, a new flu or new virus is out and about in the world is not something that should prevent us from keeping the commandments and worshiping God as he has revealed to us that he is to be worshiped. We should be willing to approach the altar. We should be willing to approach our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist in holy worship because not only is God worthy of our praise, but we belong to him. We have no claim on ourselves. We can't tell God, "Uh, no, Lord, your commandments might jeopardize the longevity of my life here on earth and therefore I'm going to skip these things. Uh, so that I can live a longer life. We're called to live our life for the kingdom of heaven, for life eternal with God. And so if we wish to be saved, if we truly wish to follow Christ, we have to live our lives with a sense of courage, knowing that the Lord might be calling us to lay down our life for the sake of the gospel. And as we live out our life, whether we live a very long life or a very short life, We're called to have a sense of detachment, not to say I don't value the life that God has given me, but to have a sense of detachment so that we don't simply say that, Lord, I'm entitled to live a long life. I'm entitled to live long enough to get married. I'm entitled long enough to have children. I'm entitled long enough to see my grandchildren be born or great-grandchildren be born. We oftentimes fall into this trap. We oftentimes try to tell God what he owes us. And the reality is, is he owes us nothing, but has given us everything. He created us. We did not create ourselves. There is nothing a person can do to bring themselves into existence. Apart from the will of God, cannot happen. Not only has he brought us into existence, he's given us existence to know him, to love him, and serve him in this life, that we might be happy with him in the next life. And in order to do this, He has done a lot in order to overcome our own fallen human nature, our own sinfulness, our own rebellion. When we fell into sin and we lost the friendship of God and there was nothing we could do to restore that, God became man, dwelt amongst us, suffered and died for us, and rose again on the third day that we might not simply live a life according to nature, but live a life according to grace, to participate in the divine life of God. And so we should be willing to say, regardless of whether or not COVID-19 exists or not, because there's always going to be something else down the road, we should be willing to say, come hell or high water, I'm going to go to Mass on Sunday. Come hell or high water, I am going to worship God as he is revealed to his church, his mystical bride, that he is to be worshipped. And I'm going to do this because I know it is not only pleasing to God, but that it's for my own ultimate good to get to heaven. When we live this life in this manner, our life will resemble the joy that we see in the lives of the saints. Because it's only when we get bogged down by the things of this world that anxiety begins to overtake our lives. It's only when we begin to be bogged down by worldly goals that we begin to really compromise the teachings of Christ within our own life and that we begin to make excuses. And none of these things make us happy. They really, they end up sucking the joy out of our life because they're drawing us away from joy himself. And so if we've been afraid or if we know people who have been afraid, let us ask the Lord to give them strength and to give us strength. Let us pray for one another And let us encourage one another to allow nothing to prevent us from coming to God. This doesn't mean that if you're sick with the flu 
and you know you're sneezing and you know and coughing and vomiting and all over the place that you should come to mass like no you you got to be prudent if you're that sick you should stay in bed but if you're relatively healthy even if you have a compromised immune system we should be willing in a prudent manner to come to mass i can only think of the individuals um, who have this fear and the only thing I would say to anyone who's staying at home at this point is you have a compromised autoimmune system you're in the at-risk community so am I and so do I would it excuse me before the sight of God to not offer mass publicly for his people and his children never would it excuse me as a priest to not hear confessions because I might get something that could jeopardize the rest of my immune system or its integrity? Never. Would it excuse me as a priest with my compromised immune system from going to anoint the sick regardless of what their, their illness is? Never. Because when I became a priest, just like all of us when we were baptized, and especially when we were confirmed, we promised God that we wanted to live a life of radical witness. And that word for witness in Greek is martyrdom, that we would be willing for the sake of the gospel to joyfully lay down our life for Christ and his church and for love of our neighbor. And when we live our lives for the kingdom of heaven, which can be very difficult for all of us, but when we truly and absolutely live our life on fire for the pursuit of life in heaven with God for all eternity, there will be no fear or anxiety that prevents us from doing God's will in this life. And those are the people who are, as in the gospel today our Lord Jesus talks about, they are the people who are truly free because they abide in God who is the source of all freedom. So my prayer is for each and every one of us this day that our Lenten observances will lead us to live a life of more radical love of God and neighbor and that it may lead us away from sin, away from any temptations of worldliness, so that in living for heaven, we might know the joy of being freed by God and by being freed to live in God for all eternity. Let us pursue this noble goal because it's what God created us for. Amen. Trusting in God, we make our petitions known to him. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to uphold her in times of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Lord bless them with the gifts necessary to serve their people with justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by illness or addiction, may God's promises and generous love be a comforting presence to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who are gathered here to worship, may the Lord give us the wisdom and faith to make our homes true domestic churches. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they soon find eternal peace and rest in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and gone before us in the faith of Christ, in a special way today, we remember Grace McGillivray, Valerie Frew, and Marilyn Johnson in honor of good graces, health, and blessings from Marilyn Barbour. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our Book of Remembrance, those we have been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask that you graciously receive our prayers and bring them to fulfillment in accord with your holy will. We ask this in the name of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings, which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Bye.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our hearts and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast in the hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist. Amen.